So much talk about AI, let's create some action. Hey everyone, Stefan here. I hope you're doing well. In the last episode, I talked about AI and how I use it in my editing process. If you haven't seen that video, I put the link in the description below. Today, I will show you how I created that action. It will be quite a short episode, but just showing you a few small little tips and tricks of making this action as versatile and as flexible as humanly possible, depending on how you already pre-process that image, whatever. So instead of looking at this old man, I said that last week, hey, let's jump into Photoshop. So let's create an action, an action that works on every single image, no matter if it's further away or a close up, an action, no matter the layer stack, no matter what you've done beforehand. So I just show you how I do it and how I get the best and fastest results. We have four images open here. Most of them are straight out of Capture One. Nothing has been done to this. So this is a straight background layer. No retouching whatsoever has been done. This is the second image, the third image. And then we have one image where there is already quite amount of layers going on. No retouching to the face has been done whatsoever. However, the background was not perfect white. So in this case, there is a perfect mask or near perfect mask that I've created to make sure that the background is indeed perfect white. So let's create the action based on this beautiful image. But keeping in mind that in other cases, they may already be quite the stack of layers. So before I even start recording, I create a layer, hold the shift key, click on this little folder icon and then or group icon and create the three or four or five groups. And then I'll select this one here. I even duplicate that and go to the bottom one. I can very much assume that not too many of my files will have such a deep structure. So I created a new set. Of course, this is my usual set where there's a ton of actions in there, but let's create a new set, which you can do here in a flyout menu and then say new set. And we will record this action in here so that we actually see what is going on. Let's click on this little plus icon to start our action. From now on, everything that we will do is recorded. So give it a decent name. I call it AI Retouch for me full. Now I can apply a keyboard shortcut to it and a color. In this case, I will use orange, it's kind of the closest to skin tones rather than blue or green. And the color will help when you switch your action panel to button and we hit record. First step is to create a new layer. And as we do so, we have to name it properly. Photoshop actions will look for the layer name. So it is super important to use unique names. Otherwise, the action will fall apart. And the first layer is the original composite. As a color, I use red. Red for me always stands don't touch. And I hit OK. As you can see, it is now down here in this stack, but it is not at the very top, but that's where I want it to be. So to move it up, I have to use the menu commands. Don't use your mouse, don't move it around. Go into layer, arrange, bring to front. Bring to front will always move it at the front of wherever hierarchy it currently sits. Because we were here in sandwiched in between layer one and layer one copy, it now moved it to the top of this stack. Now we want it to be up, 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 up. We go again into layer, bring to front. You see, it moved it out of this group, one up. We'll do that again, arrange, bring to front. As you can see, it now has recorded this move, move, move. We can do this again until we're all the way up there, or even smarter, we hit stop, select those three steps, and go in here and say duplicate. Now we have it six times. So let's just delete this layer for now. Go here, 
and run this action so far and see if this indeed creates a new layer and then moves it all the way to the top. Let's play. Didn't. It only moved it to here. So maybe we just add a few more of those. It doesn't hurt. Duplicate. We'll delete this. Again, we go down here. Go to our action. Hit play. Bang. It is on top. So now, even if we are this many steps down the rabbit hole, we will have it at the very top. If you don't have a document where you have all these structures, these steps will just simply be ignored. Play, bam, and here we go. So that way, we are sure that even if we run this action in an image like this, we will end up at the very top. All right, now that this is taken care of, let's continue with our action. I am here, the last action, and I will hit record again. I will now create a visible merge of everything that may be in the palette below. If you go into your menu here and you hit merge visible, guess what happens? Our layer is gone and it's flattened it all. So while we want to create a visible merged layer, we also have to hold the option key to make sure it does so on the current layer, not flatten everything. So now we have this layer. Now I will duplicate this layer and make sure that as I duplicate it, I also name it yet again correctly. Our first actual filter will be heal. So I will call this heal. As a color, I use orange yet again, closest to skin tone and hit OK. Now on this layer, we will run our first filter. Filter, retouch for me, heal. This will open its own panel. And as I mentioned before, I want to make sure this action works no matter what the image is. So further away, half length or close up. So I make sure that auto is selected and I also make sure that make mask is selected because I want everything non-destructive. Now that I've checked auto, make mask, I click on apply and it will indeed create this layer. To check if it actually done what I want, I stop the recording for a second. I will just have a look at this layer. And yes, indeed, it has healed a lot of areas. Wonderful. So we are on track. I can click on record again. And as you would have guessed, I create yet another layer. I call this retouch for me, dodge and burn. In this case, the color that I use is gray. By the way, those colors mean nothing to the actual action. They are just a good visual guide in your layer stack. So if you retouch and you have hundreds of different layers, it really helps to come up with some kind of scheme for yourself that identifies what different layers are doing. For me, gray is always when it is using a special blending mode. Anything that is orange has to do with skin. Anything that blue is usually background, but that's just the way my brain works. But you find your own way. All right, I'll hit OK. And yet again, I want to create a merged visible layer, but not flatten everything. So again, I'm just using the keyboard shortcut for it. So now we go into filter, retouch for me, dodge and burn. This is corrective dodge and burn. If you haven't seen my last video, I would refer you back so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nevertheless, again, it opened up in its own panel. I leave everything as default, except for making sure that auto is selected and soft light layer is ticked. And with that, I click apply and you can see what happened. I explained that in the last video, anything that is neutral gray doesn't affect the image. Anything that is darker will burn the image. Everything that is lighter will brighten the image or dodge it. And with that, I set the blending mode to soft light and that is wonderful. Now, often I use these on 70, 80% rather than 100%, but for the sake of the action, I leave it at 100 for now. With that in mind, I will create, as you would wildly guessed, 
a another layer again we have to name it properly and i call this retouch for me highlights retouch for me plugin calls it matte or mattifier i call it control of the highlights it's control of specular highlights in this image we really don't have that problem but in other images we need this so i will include it of course in our stack this will be orange again because it will be uh, skin layer so to speak click OK and again create that merged visible and go into filter retouch for me mattifier as I said in this case it will not do much but for other images it can become quite important I leave everything on default blend 50 make sure that auto is selected and make mask is selected and i click on apply very subtle in this case you hardly see a difference but that's okay repeat 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 new layer and now we go into skin tone correction that for me is a gray layer again because it will also be on soft light i hit okay and again i will create a merged visible layer I'll go into filter, retouch for me, skin tone. I explained what skin tone is doing in my last video. So if you haven't seen it yet again, go back, have a look. By the way, you can also click the like button. You can comment on it. Do whatever your heart desires. Make sure auto is selected and use soft light layer and apply and there we go we see small little adjustments so what this really does is just looking at wherever the skin tone is not average again we change this to soft light and i just leave it yet again at 100 percent very often i fade this in for now let's leave it at 100 percent surprise surprise yet another layer i call this retouch for me volume and i will make this yellow again that's just how my brain works yellow is a little bit more punchy a little bit more strong what we'll do now is dodge and burn but not to correct like the first step but to enhance to create depth to create dimension so that's a little bit more in your face and the visual that the high visible gear that people wear on the streets is yellow so i <laughs> use yellow and hit okay yet again we create a merged visible layer and we go into filter, retouch for me, portrait volumes. Yet again, it opens up in its own panel and be warned, this is a little heavy handed. It's a little powerful, but it's the reason why we do things on layers so we can reduce the opacity and fit it in how we like it. I leave the blend again alone. I make sure that auto is selected and soft light layer is selected and I click on apply switch it to soft light here we go so this would be it now before we go any further I hold the shift key and i select all of those layers that we have created hold the shift key again and click on this little folder or group icon and move them all into a group now i rename that group because we want to make sure that everything is named correctly what i do before i stop recording is I create some layer masks because I may want to brush in or brush out certain things and I don't want to do this manual afterwards it will take zero time when you run this action so I will create a layer mask for all of these and I switch the link off and as I go through I will also adjust the opacity so in this case for the dodge and burn I leave it at hundred percent for the highlights I will take this down to about 60% and create the layer mask. For the skin tone, I will leave it in this case at 100%. For the volume, I'll take it down to 40% and create that layer mask. And I will go back to the original composite and switch it off. What we now have is our complete action. Stop the recording right there. Before I judge the image, I will delete this entire thing and run the action from the start and go and make a coffee and come back. Now, it doesn't take that long, but it takes it takes a good 20, 20 seconds or so, 20, 30 seconds, depending 
on the speed of your machine, of course. In the meantime, you see in the layers panel, it is working just fine. So here we go. Now let's have a look at the result. This is before, this is after, before, after. Awesome, seems to work just fine. So let's go to this picture here. As I said, we have all those weird layers before. Let's just select one of them, any one of them down the track and hit play for our action. Now, considering how long it would take you to do all those corrections yourself and the detail in which it does it, it's also quite insane. Now, nothing is perfect. We still have to know what we're doing. We still have to know Photoshop, but it gets us very close to the result very, very quickly. Here we go. Before, after, quite impressive. So let's just see what the plugins and our action is doing on two additional images. You look at this image and you think, there's not much we need to do. I mean, this is pretty perfect, but nevertheless, Let's run the action and see what result we are getting. And I'll speed this up for you so that we don't have to wait for it. Before, after, before, after. The changes are so subtle, but yet so impressive and important. Before, after. And the last one, I have to applaud Tara for this. I asked her to come and take a quick shot before makeup and hair. And the trooper that she is, I mean, she's an amazing actress here in Australia. She's like, I don't care. And yes, she is awesome. Absolutely wonderful woman. So here we go. We play the action. And again, I will speed this up for you and we'll see what it does. And we're done. Before, after, before, after and uh, i have to say if we zoom in this has done an absolutely amazing job before after all done all you could do now is to maybe grade it a little bit so let's say we throw in a color balance go into the shadows introduce a little bit of blue a little bit of green there you go and there we have a color grade as well that's where we came from that's where we ended up in 30 seconds or less. Before, after. If that's not impressive, I cannot help it. Well, there you go. I hope that was a little bit helpful. Now, next time we see each other will be when I am back from a trip around the world. Yes, indeed. It is actually, you know, it's not. Mm. Anyway, have a good time. Be creative. Go and create something awesome.